Welcome to another semi-serious foodies. Today we're going to eat Spanish tortilla. Don't confuse this with what we would get in America, uh, a Mexican tortilla. This is a completely different dish, much more like an, an omelette with onion and potato and all sorts of deliciousness on top. Let's have a taste. It's, it's a bit like eating a frittata, um, much more like a frittata than an omelette because it's, um, in one layer it's not stock, it's stuff. It's, like, it's, um, it's a very nice. The, the concept of potatoes in egg sounds really strange, but it really works. And tortillas we can serve with, with something that's very, very common around here, and that's the tomato bread. I really like egg dishes and I reckon this would be really easy to make. Something I think you could do anywhere, anytime. Of course, all we need to do is go shopping for some eggs, potato, and onion, and we can go back to the apartment and make it. So, let's cook Spanish tortilla. We had our tortilla at the markets in Barcelona, just off Rambles, and they were everywhere around the markets. We found them in different stalls with different flavours. In fact, there is an entire book of tortilla flavours that you can have. It's quite incredible. Eggs are commonly used to make breakfast, and a lot of countries are famous for their egg dishes. France, of course, has its omelette. In Italy, there's something similar called a frittata, but much less well known in Spain is the tortilla. Now I say the word tortilla and it sounds strange to somebody from the United States who's used to the tortilla from Mexico. This is a round flat bread made from either corn or wheat. It's the thing that's used to wrap a burrito. But there's no corn or wheat in this tortilla. It's eggs, potato and onion in its simplest form. And that's what we're going to make today. You can buy ingredients at a supermarket or a market in your local area. And our local area straight after we had the tortilla was the markets that we were eating in. So we wandered around and we picked up some potato, some onion, and of course, the eggs. The reason I wanted to show you this particular recipe is not just because it's Spanish and we're in Barcelona, but because it's really versatile. You can add in other things like ham, maybe even some chicken, maybe spinach and other vegetables. I've seen plenty of variations of that. Um, the other thing that's good about it is that you can serve it hot, straight out of the pan, cool down to room temperature or even cold out of the fridge. Be great to take on picnics, things like that. We're just doing the very traditional one, just potatoes and onions. Really simple, short list of ingredients. Should be easy to make. Let's start by chopping the peeled potatoes. Yeah, I'm not gonna get thin slices with this knife. So I think I'll go for a bit of dicing then. I noticed that the tortilla at the markets, they were really thinly sliced and sort of layered up in the tortilla. So I hope this cut works. Well, you don't need absolutely perfect tools. It is helpful to have some good sharp knives. I can make this work. I have a feeling that this recipe was a way of using up leftover for potato from a, a previous meal. So I really don't think it matters the way that they're cooked. I found a steamer in this kitchen, so I'm gonna steam them, which is one of my favorite ways of doing potatoes. I prefer to steam potatoes because it doesn't waterlog them and it hangs on to a bit more of the potato flavor. So to steam the potatoes, we just need to put a small amount of water in the bottom and then the steamer basket goes in on the top. You really need very little water in the pan. You don't need a chef's kitchen and chef's tools to cook for yourself. Cooking is fairly simple and techniques like this can be done with any knife anywhere you go and you can eat well. Of course, the right tools do make it easier. But don't put off cooking because you don't have all the tools that you need. 
I've checked in on the potatoes a couple of times and they weren't ready. They were hard in the middle. So let's have another check right now. You've got to cook them until they're fork tender, which means that a fork can pass into them. I'm using a knife, but as you can see, they are pretty soft. I think they're ready to go. Now it's time to saute the onions. There are three ways that we can cook onions. The regular frying, which gets them cooked fairly quickly and makes them brown and really adds a lot of flavor from that Maillard reaction, the browning behavior, it caramelizes the surface. Or you can sweat them, which is a very slow cook uh, used in certain types of cooking. Or you can saute, which is a little bit faster than the sweat, but it leaves the onions white and not brown. And we're going to go for a saute. Along with the onions, let's put in a good bit of salt to help draw out the moisture from out of the onions. This will help them soften nicely. And that's probably a bit hard for sauteing. Yeah, let's knock that down a bit. Continue gently cooking them until the onions are, are soft but not browned. If you see any browning, turn the heat down. You want a gentle, slow cook, not too harsh. And all of the water that was in the onion has cooked away. I, I don't know what variety of onions they were, but I've never seen so much juice come out of an onion when it was chopped before. But look at it now, it's all dried up. The onions have gone really translucent. All of the water that was in the onions has cooked off. They're nice and dry. I think that's enough cooking for now. It's time to crack the eggs and lightly beat them. Gosh, look at the beautiful color of that yolk. I have a feeling these came from very, very happy hens. The deep yolk color comes when the chickens can go out and free range scavenge and have a variety of diet. The real diet, the way they were intended to have, not a, not a corn based diet because it's cheap. And because they're outside scratching around, we also know that they've not been kept in battery uh, farming so that they will have had a nice life. If I was a serious foodie, I'd be able to crack eggs with one hand, but I'm only a semi-serious foodie. I don't have a whisk, but a fork will do. Beat the eggs until the yolk and the white are incorporated, which means that you shouldn't be able to see any flecks of yolk in there. They should be the same consistent color all the way through. Add the potatoes into the pan. and stir around just to mix together the onion and the potato. I think I'm trying to muddle the potatoes around to get them into an even layer. That way they'll be evenly distributed throughout the tortilla. That looks pretty good. And now it's time to pour in the eggs. Into a medium hot pan, the eggs go over the mixture of potatoes and onions. Look at that color. Isn't it beautiful? I love the color of those yolks. The idea of keeping moving around the edges is so that we slightly round that edge in. So when it's flipped over, it will already take on the round shape of the pan and have a nice even edge. That's a tip we got from our host. I hope it works. And certainly what we saw on the tortillas at the markets, they were all rounded on both edges. Yes. That's starting to look like what it's supposed to look like. The easiest way to finish it off, I think, would be to put it under a broiler and that way the top would set without you having to do any kind of fancy flipping. But the traditional way is that it gets put out onto a plate and then put back into the pan to cook the other side. Um, I'm a little worried about this next step. So the middle has to be set. The middle has to be slightly set, yes. It's still a bit weird, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's poking up for. The recipe suggests that we should flip it into the lid of the saucepan and then slide it back into the pan. But I think there's a better way using a plate as well as the lid. Let me show you. All right. <laughs> Ours is gonna be more of a potato scramble. It should have flipped over much more evenly than that. It's not going to affect the flavor, but it's certainly going to affect the appearance. Now, of course, as a real cooking show, we'd have a backup. Of course, we would have 
people that have already done it. Yes. Yeah. Okay. This time I'm going to do it the way Alton Brown does it, by using a plate for both actions and not using the saucepan lid. Despite the disaster, that doesn't look too bad. That actually looks really good. I love the brown colour on it. We're going to let that cool before we cut and eat it. Cooling will allow it to set up the little bit and perhaps uh, disguise my disaster a little bit better. The tortilla has had a couple of hours to cool down and we're ready to eat. We've served it with a simple side salad of rocket and olives and a lovely glass of Spanish red wine. Let's have a taste, shall we? Shall we, yes. It doesn't look too bad despite our little um, flipping incident. It's firmed up nicely. Mm -hmm. That tastes really good. Yeah, that's every bit as good as the one we had in the markets this morning. I think I preferred what they did in the markets with the thinly sliced potato because you get a little bit um, less potato in each mouthful. The potato is quite plain compared to the, to the um, egg mixture, but the flavour is definitely there. Um, I think I could make this a few more times and really, really improve it, but this is a really good job. So, restaurant food, fresh ingredients, simple techniques, and delicious food. That sounds like us. Hmm.